there at my old campground where I had that something walking around my tent that night. And uh, today I got David Wilbanks from the Bigfoot and More YouTube channel. He's come down here with me and we're just walking around and seeing what we can see. We're going to camp tonight and see if we can hear anything for one. Maybe see anything. Or maybe see anything. He wants to real bad. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not so sure if I do. Uh, what do you think about the spot so far? Uh, this is a nice place. This is, the, this is the first time I've been down to this exact area here. I've been north of here, east of here, and west of here both. So uh, before, but never to this exact uh, location We're here on the Little River. And uh, we did some fishing earlier, which the fish were not cooperating. He uh, caught one. Much, but I caught one big enough for him to use for bait for, for catfish. It's a nice spot. I want, I want to come back here sometime for sure. We'll keep you updated on whatever happens tonight. We're going to walk around a little bit probably and, and uh, if he can drag me and see what we can see. Well, a lot, a lot of times it's uh, uh, just waiting and see what comes to us. You know, we might do a little hiking too, but um, hopefully we'll get some activity close to camp tonight. Uh, maybe whatever walked up to John's tent that, that time before, we'll uh, walk back into camp again. And, uh, and so are you sleeping in a tent tonight or are we just I, sleeping out in the I open? don't know. I might put up a tent, okay. that lunch sack. Yeah. <laughs> or sack well, lunch, whatever. <laughs> yeah, I'm jokingly... Uh, over the years called a tent a sack lunch for a predator. So uh, anyway, that's kind of stuck. Cornell from the No Such Thing podcast, he's going to come down this summer and we're going to try to get together too. Yeah, yeah. And I'm sure Cornell will, will watch this. So uh, yeah, he's our friend from up Massachusetts. He was just down here a couple of weeks ago and uh, he and I and, and my son went into the uh, Kaimishi Mountains, and we had a very interesting trip there as well. And that's where we're at right now is a, about 40 miles from the from where we were a couple of weeks ago. So, and thanks for inviting me down here. Any, any yeah, time, absolutely, any time. absolutely. So, I might, I might become a true believer. Hey, you never know. Just hopefully you don't become a. a Something David Politis talks about on his missing 411 thing. We don't. Right. We don't want that. No. <laughs> you know? We don't want that. <laughs> yeah. Don't even talk about that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Probably talk about that after. The after. Trip. Yeah. After, after we get the home. trip, we we'll talk about that. <laughs> you know? All right. So we'll catch up with you guys. On the road here. We've been walking a little ways. How far are we gone? Three quarter mile. Three quarter? Anyway. Probably. I don't know. Haven't seen any tracks. Yeah. Hog. You hear that? Heard something. That's a hog. Right down there somewhere. Yep. I don't even have one chambered. Must be just over the edge there. Well, that was exciting. Actually got something recorded. Hog squat. Hog squatch. Whatever. I hope it was a hog, not a bear. I think that was a hog, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. It didn't bear. Sounded off a piggy, though. Yeah. But we've been seeing if we could find any tracks in this. Got some rain last night. Turkey tracks. Can't see that. I didn't 
chamber one. Since I don't have a holster. Put the chamber around pretty darn fast. I yeah, <laughs> I was gonna have to have to drop my phone <laughs> to do it. Yeah, when you like me walking around looking for Sasquatch evidence for the first time and you hear a wild hog snort, it kind of gives you a little start. And then that stuff, unless they want to. Yeah, too thick. It's too thick. Yeah. I don't want to walk up on a mama pig with a bunch of babies. No. Man, that's a pretty one out there. Yeah. That is pretty. There one time last year I was mushroom hunting down there on the place at Calvin and I that spooked me. I had come right through the brush. A mama pig, three piglets, and a boar coming right toward me, and they went right by me. Really? And I mean, they were on me before I even had a chance to pull my pistol out. Yeah. But I was like, whew, I'm glad they didn't have meanness on their mind. Yeah, those hogs ain't nothing to mess with, that's for sure. All right. We're out here sitting by the fire swapping stories right now. And you know, those of you who know uh, David Wilbanks know he's he's been doing this for a long time. How long have you been doing this? I've been in, actively investigating Bigfoot sightings in Oklahoma primarily for about 25 years, I guess. Been interested in it since I was a little kid. Yeah. Well, this is my very first on-purpose investigating. <laughs> on-purpose. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, and it's been fun so far. We'll see how the rest Not of the night scary, goes. But uh, you was talking about a story and uh, uh, about some of the things you've done, and you was going to tell me something about this uh, Grand Lake sighting that you investigated one time. Yeah, like, like I was telling you, if that wasn't an area that was so far from where I lived, you know, I would still go up there and look around but oh back in 2000 I believe it was 2001 received an email uh, from a guy that happened to be a police officer at the time about him and a buddy was up there camping and they had a face-to-face -face encounter with a uh, with a Bigfoot and I went and investigated that but basically it um, they had been camping and this, and this story is is told on the uh, the television documentary that was that I was on called Bigfootville uh, as well and they were on there and they tell tell the happening but basically him and his friend who was also a, a law enforcement officer were camping they had been hearing something outside their camp but then after dark uh, they went around there's this big dirt berm there at the bottom of this mountain they went around it and apparently this Bigfoot had been laid down on the other side of it looking over the top at them and uh, mm. and, uh, and i asked him i said well what did you do and i'm not going to repeat what he said he did but he screamed like something and ran is what he said <laughs> and they uh you know they left all of their camping gear down there and just jumped in their vehicle and left and I, if i'm remembering correctly he sent somebody back for his equipment the next day and um I went to that spot, it's probably a couple of weeks or so after, if that long, I, I don't remember the time frame exactly, but it wasn't very long after uh, they seen this that I went up there. And uh, at that time, uh, the 
man would still not stay down there after dark. But as time went on, and I went returned to that area several times, he got where he would go down there and uh, uh, camp with me. The he would go with you. Yes. Yeah. And we'd stay down there. So, um, but yeah, whatever you know, they what they saw it scared them enough. They left all their equipment down there. Yeah, I told a young man who contacted me, and he lives up in that area. And he's wanting to go out and, and investigate this type of thing. And I said, well, check out the river bottoms below uh, Grand Lake. That's a, that's a prime area up there. Have, I haven't been there in many years, though. Yeah. I think the last time I was there is actually when we uh, shot footage for the, the Bigfootville uh, documentary. Hmm. That was... Uh, that was the last time I was there. Since then, I've focused, I've put my focus on uh, southeast Oklahoma. It's, it's um, closer to where I live, and there seems to be more activity in this part of the state than anywhere else. Hear something? I did. Might be time to break out the microphone. Yeah, David's got a parabolic microphone that he brought. I think it'd be all right to see if I can put on a little light. Sure. Not hearing anything right now. Hey, it was it sounded like it was right through there. It sounded kind of like what you said you heard a while ago, but it it didn't sound as far. Sounded like it was a little ways off, but not too terribly far. Kind of a grunt or something. Actually, partially picking up the fire. The oh, really? Very quiet right now. Hmm. I saw your reflection reflectors on your pickup and I thought, what's her eyes up there? <laughs> yeah. Cornell had uh, videoed some on his first trip down here and through the trees he thought he had some kind of reflection there but when he focused in on it enhanced it he's like yeah that's the reflector on your truck <laughs> that's why I he was a bit disappointed it's further away too though isn't it it's over here Video. I heard one yell before they started. Yeah, that yell before they started, that wasn't a coyote though. It's 10 o'clock, 10.07. That first one was not a coyote. Yeah, that was... I don't know what it was either for sure. Hmm. Interesting though. Yeah. Yeah, that was a trap. That almost sounded like the start of some kind of storm siren or something there for a minute. Okay, I got these. 
it's parabolic earphones on. I'm gonna. Let's go get away from the phone. I'm gonna try and experiment and put my phone under this headphone and see if you can hear. Yeah, I hear it. Or something walking in the brush or moving. Still here? Yeah. Hear it pretty good right there. Getting closer, or I don't think so. Yeah, that's weird. Can you hear it? No, not right now. Yeah, we'll keep checking. Fixing to try to sleep a little bit. He made me feel bad about putting my tent up, so I'm going to go ahead and sleep by the fire on the cot. We haven't heard anything else in a while. It's about a 1 o'clock, I think. But a pretty good little log we found there to put on the fire somebody had cut. So we'll let you know if anything else comes up. All right, next morning we uh, got our camp broke down. We're fixing to head out. But had a pretty good, interesting night, I think. Got a little bit of audio and heard some good coyote sounds and a couple of tree knocks, I guess. But we're going to head back. Dave, what did you think about the trip? I like this place. It's a, it's a nice spot. Remote. I like it like that. Yeah. yeah. Did you get cold last night? Uh, yeah, it was cold. Did you get wet? <laughs> well, Sleeping bag got wet. I mean, if I'd have fell in the river like we both, we about both did. Yeah. Step down there close to about slipped in. It'd have been really colder then. Yeah. But yeah, it was. It was a cold night. We're fixing to load up and get on out of here, so I'll see y'all next time.